Hello there campers, my name is Paul Hughes and I'm the Lord of Leisure and welcome to another Aftermath video. Basically these Aftermath videos are when I basically come out of watching the cinema, watching a new film uh, and then I just give you my initial impressions followed by the point where inevitably I go on lordofleisure.com, type up some actual proper stuff and then give you a proper opinion about things. Now I appreciate this is not normally where I do them. It, this is indeed my front room. It, it's simply because the last couple of films uh, I went to watch at the cinema this week, I didn't actually record anything directly afterwards. So this is sort of like an after, 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 aftermath thing. And it's also a two for one. I was always tempted to swear there. And I was just like, oh, no, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't. Two for one. There you go. Don't turn the, you can turn the finger that way, but not, yeah, you get what I mean. It's a two for one aftermath this week, um, simply because there's been two films that I've gone and watched, but not actually done any aftermath uh, uh, initial thoughts on. So I figured, why not just round it all off quite nicely, comfortably in my front room with a lovely cup of tea, before then just disappearing again for a while. Now the two films I've uh, seen this week at the cinema for someone's dining and dancing pleasure. I'm not entirely sure who, but hello to all of you. First one was The Incredibles 2, which was brought out by Disney and Pixar, uh, what was it, 15 years or so, uh, longer? Possibly 20 years? I, I, I can't actually remember how long it was since uh, the first Incredibles film. Anyway, it's about uh, the, the group of, well, it's a superhero family in a world which has banned superheroes and how they struggle with that and how unfortunately various things unravel. I'm not entirely sure who was screaming out for the sequel to the first one because the first one was just kind of good anyway. I mean, I certainly enjoyed it. I mean, Craig T. Nelson as uh, Mr. Incredible uh, was a, a terrific job and actually just he was always he was in many ways he was always a bit of a dick uh, character in this except for when it really mattered because he was not really cut out for family life or anything that much was abundantly clear uh, Holly Hunter also um, was fantastic as Elastic Girl uh, in the previous one Samuel L Jackson of course uh, Free Zone uh, Frozone however you pronounce the name they they all the majority of the cast have come back for the sequel which seems to continue exactly where the first one left off uh, in a car park where the underminer, uh, basically a mole looking dude, uh, comes up in a giant underground uh, drill thingy and thus all sorts of shenanigans and what have you um, happen as a result. So they're trying to avoid as much as humanly possible as much destruction. Unfortunately, quite a bit still happens. Superheroes are still illegal at this point, so they are arrested, they are relocated for a final time. It seems that the superhero relocation program that helped them move around over and over again uh, in the previous film has basically been shut down. So now they really do have to fend for themselves. And that's when an interesting offer comes in from uh, these two billionaire telecommunications people, where they offer the opportunity for Elastigirl to do some good PR for superheroes um, to, in essence, try and get the government back on their side so that then they can make superheroes legal again. But of course, it's not going to go as simple as that. There has to be a new villain and, of course, they have to have some ulterior motives and it has to be someone, oh no, we don't see coming and blah blah blah. Uh, all while this is going on, we see uh, Craig T. Nelson uh, suffer, I guess, again? family life where he has to look after the kids while uh, Holly Hunter goes off and does all the superhero actual superhero stuff uh, all the while it, it turns out Jack Jack's powers are completely random and just keep changing almost on a minute by minute basis and no one knows really how to deal with it except to get offer him a cookie <laughs> I have to be honest Jack Jack is pretty much one of the one of the major highlights in the film and in a strange sort of way, this Incredibles 2 kind of went further in terms of, well, I, I suppose how society's moved on in terms of role reversals, you know, and women potentially uh, being the breadwinners, as it were, which 
uh, Elastigirl certainly turns into the uh, breadwinner of the house simply because well mind you Craig T. Nelson wasn't any good at it in the first film uh, in all honesty if you're going to look at uh, back at it so I suppose in, in many ways it's just kind of affirming that she's the uh, friendly PR face to put on superheroes and various situations uh, turn out. I mean, he, apparently, he, well, you've, you'll probably have seen this from the trailer where he gets confused about how they've changed how you do mathematics uh, <laughs> problems and, and so forth. Now, for me, The Incredibles 2 was certainly a good film to watch. Absolutely. Uh, it was definitely entertaining. A little bit slow at times, but that was, I suppose, to break up the obvious action that was going to go on with also just like dealing with a, another heroic challenge being a parent there you go it's there there's, there's that uh, phrase for the day sorry everyone who's a parent quiet it's all quiet here um <laughs> Uh, the animation uh, styles like the 19 sort of the mixture of the 1950s and modern day is still present it's all there it's all incredibly well done uh, Edna when she turns up the uh, lady who is a uh, who was the designer uh, who effectively was Q uh, like in James Bond he, she was uh, basically the um, costume designers for the Incredibles in the first film she is incensed and she got replaced darling um and the minute she finds out jack jack has powers yeah she she goes on a moderate bender trying to make a whole new suit for him with all sorts of extra bells and whistles now there aren't that many surprises but there's certainly the odd two um that does come up as to who the bad guy is and blah 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 and inevitably where they come up to the finale where you know they got to save the day and blah 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 that all is uh, pretty damn good uh, as well um there's not in a strange sort of way i suppose this is one of the problems like not doing an aftermath uh, what i think directly after the film because it's or maybe this is doing more telling you know it's been a few days since i've watched uh, the incredibles 2 and i can certainly remember a, a couple of scenes but the rest of it is kind of... It, it's starting to go out of my head. So I suppose either it wasn't really that memorable and it was a, it was a perfectly fine sequel uh, to watch. I mean, I said, the thing is, I would certainly recommend going to watch it, because, especially if you watched the, the first one and really enjoyed that, because the, the fact that it carries on directly from the first one as well, the, the continuity there is pretty good. And where they haven't got the original voice actors... It's kind of hard to tell, but then again, it's also, without watching them back to back, you wouldn't really have a clue as to who had actually got replaced with whom. Uh, certainly the main voice actors appear to be back. Um, I'd have to actually check IMDb or otherwise if I was that bored. Which I could be, considering I'm, I'm recording this in my front room. Um, with a cup of tea, obviously, for someone's dining and dancing pleasure. Uh, there were definitely the highlights for me were Jack Jack with him. Uh, Edna definitely was a highlight. Elastigirl at the point where the film got interesting from the villain perspective actually uh, was pretty good. And it, it was it was good how they, they turned things around a little bit. Um, some of the auxiliary superheroes they came up with uh, were just utter shit. So I'm just saying that they were. I think that's why the, the, the film wasn't about them, but they were still there. Um, like Void and uh, oh, um, Reflux. Yeah, his special power is basically vomiting bile. I think you know from acid reflux. <laughs> Yay, old people jokes. Um, it was an incredibly well done, well budgeted out thing, and it did work well on the big screen for especially the big, uh, ooh yeah, sequences where, you know, all sorts of uh, shenanigans and dilly are going on. I wasn't bored through the film, which is a major plus. That I, I can say.
Um, so, without obviously writing up the full mini mech, because I'm really going to have to think about this. Would I? Would I see? Would I say go and watch it at the cinema? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Incredibles two was. It was worth uh, the fun. Uh, it was it was fun actually. I, I should say that it, again. This is kind of the, the problem with not not saying your feelings about uh, a film directly afterwards when it's raw. It, um, at the very least, Incredibles two, I would say, still go to the cinema and see. Now, the next film, the second film, was Skyscraper. <laughs> Skyscraper. Yeah, so good, I can't even say it once. Uh, <laughs> starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, which means that uh, by default I would go and watch it anyway. Um, set, it, basically the, the setup was, is that this is a diehard film set in China. Because Dwayne The Rock Johnson is basically going to go in and save his family. And then by extension save everyone else probably from whoever they got as um oh who was it <laughs> i'm trying to remember hans gruber how can i forget the bad guy's name in die hard well quite easily i just did right right here on the recording um that's pretty much how they set a uh, skyscraper up it was to be a modern day die hard set in an extraordinarily huge non-existent uh, tower in Hong Kong where some chap has spent uh, billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and squillions uh, of money making the largest tower in the world three times the size of the Empire State Building and all sorts of other wonderful things they'll uh, you know basically the film doesn't stop by shitting over exposition uh, to explain absolutely everything. They, nothing is going to be left to chance in this, so you can really leave your brain at the door, because everything will be handed to you on a silver platter. Um, <laughs> it's actually re really funny, this. I mean, Skyscraper, I watched um, yesterday at the time of recording this, therefore that is certainly more in my head than what The Incredibles 2 was. Uh, maybe the, the two are conflicting, because the Incredibles 2 was, as I said, a, a fun film. This is certainly a fun film, but it's certainly dumber uh, in many respects. But it doesn't pretend to be anything grandiose, uh, to be fair, either. Um, what, what, what amazes me is that how The Rock is always going to be ex-Special Forces, FBI, slash lifeguard, slash you know, kindergarten cop at this point. And probably kindergarten cop. If they're going to remake that, it's going to be with uh, Dwayne Johnson. Yes, I would watch it anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm such a shill. But, <laughs> in, in essence, uh, in, in this film, Dwayne Johnson is an ex-FBI hostage rescuer slash special ops, or, you know, all the usual gubbins. Uh, he he unfortunately encounters a little bit of a to-do, a little bit of a palaver in the opening couple of minutes of the film, which then opens up to why he has um, a false leg, you know, a, a prosthesis, uh, effectively. So in essence, you've kind of got a, a, a sort of disabled person in the lead role, well, at least a character in the in the lead role, which, in a strange sort of way. Uh, is kind of a change, isn't it? I mean, okay, it's not an actual person who would have uh, actually gone through this, but in, in essence, they did do a, a good job at actually illustrating like some of the uh, the fun uh, and frolics. I have no doubt that uh, people have to put up with with putting on their uh, um, artificial limbs and, and so forth. Um, and it also does make some of the things that he does in the film even more fucking ridiculous, frankly. <laughs> like jumping off a crane and jumping, Aah! you know, and they're just, no, no, it's just, it's, come on, come on, no. Uh, <laughs> but it turns out that 20, 20 years later, The Rock is a health and safety inspector, for lack of a better word, uh, term of putting it. He's a small businessman who has apparently just been, you know, he's been highlighted by one of his uh, ex-best friends 
who used to be in the FBI hostage sa uh, safety saving whatever thing as well and he gets to look over this billion 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 squillion pound dollar whatever tower in Hong Kong for safety and all the rest of it before it's open to the public but lo and behold there's treachery afoot from the inevitable uh, person who they're gonna go with for Hans Gruber it's not Alan it, it's it, I'm sorry to say this the uh, Hans Gruber character in skyscraper I'm sorry Alan Rickman just he wipes the floor with you it that's it if you're gonna do a comparison like for like there, there is none it's apples and oranges Alan Rickman Hans Gruber sorry piss all over uh, this chap um, who I, I don't recognize uh, and, and he didn't do a completely bad job he did a he did a, uh, a decent enough job as the bad guy it's just that if you're gonna look for anything memorable in the bad guy if you're gonna compare you know anything to die hard that's that's where it definitely falls down and it's probably a, it, I can see that this is not this is also not a Christmas film like die hard <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that. One thing that made me really laugh throughout the entire film was the fact that everyone is watching on a giant sharp screen everything that's happening on the tower outside. They effectively, every time uh, Dwayne Johnson's doing something miraculous or otherwise, it's fucking televised live and everyone's going, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just all, oh, yeah, everyone just, what is wrong with you? A tower is on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're hanging around the area just going <laughs> I know I know I know it, 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 that, that made me laugh uh, as well actually the, the, the name of the building made me laugh as well the pearl so obviously Captain Jack Sparrow is going to come come after the pearl uh, at some point <laughs> And obviously, you got you've got heavy amounts of foreshadowing as to what's going to come along. And then there's there's a couple of points which make absolutely no fucking sense. Who cares? You know, uh, genuinely, this is B movie making, uh, absolutely uh, decent enough special effects. I will say that for all the parts you pretty much know are CGI, it doesn't look that terrible. You know, where uh, obviously films like this they tend to cut back on various things. A lot of the green screen stuff and all the rest of it, yeah, it was done pretty well. Um, Got to be honest, it seems that the police in Hong Kong do have a little bit of a clue about things. Although, again, they are all, uh, often also just there just to say, oh, that's happening! Uh, it, every time it cuts back and forth uh, between them. You see, this is the problem. I said, skyscrapers in my head more than The Incredibles 2. That's really unhelpful. Um, would I say that this is worth watching? If you're a fan of The Rock, you'll have a couple hours to kill. Yeah, why not? But I wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to say, absolutely, this is a must-watch film. This is a nice... This is a nice B-movie. Uh, action with... Uh, uh, with occasional acting. I know, surprisingly. Um... The, the special effects, as I said, were not that bad. A lot of the situations were indeed contrived, and some of it was just complete bollocks. But then again, for something like this, yeah. I mean, I, look, put it this way. Uh, after coming out of the cinema, I wasn't exactly upset about the money that, that was spent on, on watching it. But I wouldn't necessarily go on my way to watch it again, um, uh, remarkably. It... it, it if they were pitching this against uh, Die Hard, there's, there's no question, Die Hard just wins uh, without breaking a sweat. And frankly, given uh, where that's set, it's also a perfect excuse to watch every Christmas. Whereas I don't see how anyone would be... Unless they were going to do a Dwayne Johnson marathon, I, I don't see how they would possibly... It's a tough one. I mean, I possibly would watch it again if it was just like, you know, I, w I was doing my ironing and Netflix happened to have it on or, or Amazon Prime or, or, or the streaming service of your choice. Um, happen to have it on and I'll, I'll, I'll simply put it on then. So I, I'm on the fence. I mean, I'm a Dwayne Johnson fan boy, so therefore I would go watch this anyway. 
someone else. I mean, it's it's an empty-headed uh, summer blockbuster thing. It does the job, absolutely. I did not come away feeling annoyed or otherwise. Uh, the surprises were not a surprise. And also, uh, you can see, uh, obviously, the British bloke who is the insurance salesman. Yeah, you, you don't fucking trust him as far as confirm. But come on, you could have. I know it was a small part, but you could have got a, a better uh, British bad guy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We, 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 I mean, if Alan Rickman can do uh, Hans Gruber, well, you know, and it, with, with a questionable German accent. Uh, I'm sure we could have found someone else here uh, as well. I mean, I, I know they had um, some Dan. It was a. Uh, I, I, that's the thing. A Danish actor was the uh, person playing the Hans Gruber uh, character in Skyscraper. Um, it was. It wasn't. It, that I keep going back in his head. It, it wasn't bad, but it was just. It was. It was fine. That's it. Skyscraper was fine. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't out, you know, jump out of my seat. Oh my god, the best thing since sliced bread. It was fine. So, would I recommend you going to watch this at the cinema? If you're a Dwayne Johnson fan, you've already gone. Yeah, that that's it. Others, given the kind of, there's not much else good to watch right now. I mean, arguably, if you're going to have this as a, a toss-up between. Uh, skyscraper and the Incredibles. I would actually say the Incredibles wins out against Skyscraper. There you go. This, this is why we can do a two for one video. That we can just you know uh, compare uh, compare the two. Um, they they both got some action. Obviously different premises and what have you. Some uh, over the top ludicrousness, but uh, they can get away with it with it being a cartoon in the, the Incredibles two. Whereas somewhere in Skyscraper is just. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Some of it hugely contrived, but hey, I, I enjoyed it in any case. So uh, that's probably muddied the waters completely. There you go, campers. Those are my those are my thoughts on uh, The Incredibles 2 and Skyscraper, both out at the UK cinema right now, uh, probably worldwide. Hey, they've been out for a little while. Um, that's going to be it. Now, obviously, the proper mini mares of uh, these films when I actually get you know the two brain cells in my head working together will be found on lordofleisure.com for your reading pleasure while you're on the toilet is so you can just read it while you're looking at your phone instead of playing you know Hearthstone or Super Mario Run or whatever it is people play on their phones these days you know that that's it I'm 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 old I'm old I'm just so old so I don't know um, so until next time, campers, where there'll be uh, an aftermath video basically back at the cinema. <laughs> I hope. Um, until next time, campers, take it easy, and I will see you all again very soon. And until then. Ah!